Welcome everyone to my latest Galactic Civilizations 3 Let's Play. My name is Maxon. For this game I'm going to be using patch 1.03 which has just come out when I'm recording this. And the civilization I'm going to be playing is the Iridium Corporation. At the end of my last Let's Play with the Town Alliance basically I put up a straw poll on a channel with a number of civilizations for people to choose from and they won that by quite a bit. They're a civilization that very much focuses on generating wealth and I'm going to be going into details about their abilities and race traits a bit later on. I do plan on doing a custom race let's play at some point. I'm probably going to wait until the game is on version 1.1 before doing it though. That's when Steam Workshop is due to be added to the game. So I'm sure a lot of people will be making custom races for the game at that point and extra custom ships and it'll be much more interesting then to do a custom race basically. If you are one of those people who does do a uh, custom race and puts it on Steam Workshop and would like me to showcase it in a uh, Let's Play then get in touch with me and who knows that may happen. Right, the Origin Corporation as I mentioned very much focus on wealth. They are an ultra-capitalistic civilization ruled by a number of multi-planet corporations, firm believers in the power of free markets. They specialize in economic and cultural growth. So they have two abilities, of course, like everyone else does. They have trade routes, which give approval bonuses to both parties and two extra trade routes. So they're very much focused on trade. And they actually start with tourism. You don't have to unlock it via the tech tree and they get bonus credits also. That happens to be currently an extra 2,500 credits, so they get 7,500 rather than 5,000 like the rest of the civilizations. It's quite a generous amount to uh, start with actually, even normally. Uh, the race traits, I'll go into detail about them later on. I'll show you the diplomacy screen in a bit. So, uh, the galaxy settings I'm using are basically I've basically set them up to generate a certain amount of planets, about 40 to 50, that should give us a decent game. And there's actually a new feature in 1.03, you can now select random opponents. So I've put this on four, so four of those will be our opponents basically. Uh, game settings I've kept basically to the default apart from, well I've changed the difficulty, we're going to be playing on the hardest difficulty, Suicidal Godlike as I do for all of my uh, Galactic Civilizations 3 Let's Plays. I've changed the minor races, normally that's off, that's now on occasional, which is the uh, middle amount. And I've decided to actually keep tech trading on. I really hate tech trading, but I should probably show it off in at least one of these Let's Plays and uh, go into details about how Stardock can, can actually improve it. At the moment, it's a real micromanagement nightmare and it's very very easy to exploit the AI so this game will probably be a bit easier than normal because I've kept this on but um, yeah I'm gonna keep it on for this let's play and probably turn it off in future ones unless people want me to keep it on. Uh, victory options I'm gonna keep all of those on there's no point in turning any of them off and as I mentioned my map settings are basically uh, set up to generate a certain amount of plants on average 40 to 50 ish maybe a 55, 60. Uh, so it's a huge map right down in the middle. Huge, is, as I've mentioned in a previous Let's Play, really is huge. And it's going to keep loose clusters, which means I don't like tight clusters. Uh, so out of the other options, loose clusters is the best, I think. There. It's like semi, semi uh, bulky in certain areas, basically. That's the wrong word, but uh, yeah. Uh, so star systems, uh, the I've changed the black hole frequency in Nebula to have uh, a bit of extra frequency, so there's more geographical features, and as I mentioned, the rest is to generate a certain amount of planets. Extreme planets don't seem to be that common or uh, frequent on this current patch, so I've increased them a bit, so they're a bit more likely to appear. Right, so I think that covers just about everything, so let's get started. Okay, so this is the Iridium Corporation's welcome screen. New markets await Iridium Corporation. The Iridium Corporation is the apex corporate entity of an ultra-capitalistic society. The only organization capable of entering into contracts on behalf of the entire Iridium people. The entire Iridium culture is based on a firm, even fanatical belief in the power of free markets. 
Although no strangers to weaponry, all research is first considered through the lens of mutual cooperation. The destructive cost of warfare is often too great for Iridiums to seriously consider. It remains to be seen how well this philosophy will fare when introduced to more close-minded races. Now it kind of suggests here that they're basically a peaceful race that just relies on trading. Doesn't mean you have to play in that fashion of course. I'm more than likely going to end up conquering at least one or two AIs if not all of them. Uh, kind of a, that's kind of how I tend to play 4X games. Uh, their strengths and weaknesses are basically their racial traits so I can actually show those off in more detail by going here. So Iridiums are excellent at research and development and quick to maximize the economic potential of any new discovery. The ships are also far ranging, enhancing their natural inclination to trade. Growth potential is limited somewhat by the species slower than average population growth. So yeah, you can see it mentions these traits here. So they're a bit better at getting at buildings faster than other races, have a bit less maintenance, they generate a bit more wealth, they have a bit more value from their trade routes, a bit more extra range. This is uh, this malice trait here in Fertile is particularly bad though. It's probably one of the worst malice traits you can have. Basically population determines how much uh, production each planet produces. The more population you have, the more uh, wealth and research and manufacturing you generate. So having a growth from malice means you can have less population in general. So that's a particularly bad trait to have. It should show their abilities here, but it doesn't yet, sadly. Um, I don't think it actually shows Taurism um, on the first turn, but we'll start to get that from next turn. I'm not going to get much because Taurism um, is based on how much influence you have, and we don't have much yet. Right, the location of our homeworld seems to be uh, pretty central-ish. There actually seems to be a lot of stars here. So it might be more than 50 habitable planets on this map, potentially, potentially I should say. Uh, let's take a look at Iridia. Now Iridia is actually pretty good usually because it has a lot of land. Basically later on we'll be able to terraform a lot and uh, get all of these tiles that there's land on. So we should be able to get a lot of adjacency bonuses. We seem to have a bonus resource here that gives us extra influence. Nothing special, but yeah, I'll take it. There's a food tile there, and also gives approval next to it. There's manufacturing and tourism there. So it looks like there's a big, there's a decent sized circle here. I wouldn't be surprised if I have manufacturing over here. What I tend to do with my home worlds early on is basically split them between research and manufacturing, and then focus on one or the other later on. Usually manufacturing because it's the uh, place usually want to make your ships here early on or always want to make your ships here early on actually uh, via the shipyard so I am gonna need some research here though so let's put some research somewhere does that give no it gives influence adjacency sadly it's not particularly very good tiles for my research in terms of adjacency let's stick one there one there one there. I'm going to buy that one. Because we are the Iridium Corporation, we actually start with 7,500, which I might have mentioned earlier. Uh, so I can buy quite a bit here. Now, I'm on my global screen, which I'm not going to use at all, basically, from this point on, I'm going to put that to social. It's much better to use the local planet's governor because you tend to want to specialize your planets and you don't want to lose production on your worlds which uh, the global governor tends to do if you use it so I think all of that's done research now you may have seen my guide videos I did a, there's a couple of guide videos out at the time I'm recording this one is for how to colony spam and the other one is planetary management uh, so I tend to always go for a certain few key texts uh, to start out uh, basically to increase the speed of my ships and also their range and their sensors. So I'm going to be coming up in this direction here, uh, focusing on research early on. Did I put this on research? No, I didn't. I put it on manufacturing. Yeah, so once I've got those few key techs, I can pump out colony ships that are really fast and have good range. That's basically my intention. 
Everyone starts out with a few ships, so we've got a scout ship, a survey ship, and a colony ship. I'm not going to colonize that planet yet, so I'm actually going to buy a colony ship. Uh, let's check out our range here. So with my colony ship, I want to basically use the scout and uh, colonize the planet further afield. That will then increase my range by colonize the planet, say, over here, so I could then move ships out in that general direction. You tend to want to move colonize towards another AI where they might be to prevent them from colonizing planets uh, that uh, you would want to basically so I'm not sure where to go here I think I might send a scout ship up there because it's quite central it could be AIs all over the place here so yeah I just want to send them, them off in three directions really I send the colony ship out down here I think I send a scout ship up north. Pretty slow to start out, but that will increase our movement in a bit. And a survey ship can come out over here. Okay. And with my shipyard, I'm actually going to buy a ship. I'm going to buy a sensor ship. Now, I've previously designed... I've played the Iridiums before, so I've designed some ships previously. This is a sensor ship. This patch has actually done a lot to nerf sensor ships. A lot of people were making these to discover a huge amount of uh, the fog very early on. You can still do that to a certain extent, but basically these sensor modules now provide less sensor range and also cost a lot more. So this is going to be pretty expensive to buy. But one change that they have made recently is the wealth to production calculation. So these now cost basically buildings and ships cost 10 times as much wealth as uh, instead of 15 which is what it used to be. So this is going to cost me 1590 to buy now. So I'm going to buy that and since I've got a ton of extra money with the original corporations I can definitely afford it. I'm also going to stick a settler in the list then to colonize that planet within my home world. This has been stripped of modules so as cheap as possible and I think I've done everything I wanted to do for this turn so let's end turn okay as you can see that sensor ship immediately revealed all of that sensor range it used to be a lot more powerful than that um, once I get this tech though I'm gonna upgrade that sensor ship so it'll be a bit better I'll discuss that later though uh, so that colony is amazing. I'm not going to use this colony ship to colonize that though. It's a brilliant wealth planet, very high class, so a lot of tiles. Let's bring this sensor ship over there. I think I'll bring this sensor ship I just made just down here in general maybe probably towards the biggest cluster I could do with two of those actually I may even buy another one um, it's very expensive to upgrade them though that's the problem so I'm not sure I can afford it let's bring that to there let's buy that this turn why is that so expensive I put the wrong one in the list, that's why. Let's put uh, that one in. That's uh, what I meant to, what I meant to put in. So this one is actually stripped, the other one wasn't. Okay, I think I put two in as well. Okay, let's buy some more research. Okay, it looks as if tourism income has kicked in. I'm actually making some money here. So let's check this out. Yeah, four. Not much because the influence is terrible. Right, I've moved everything, I believe. So let's end turn. Okay, uh, that finished the colony ship. So let's get this out. I could have actually put the population from that colony ship back on homeworld because it starts at two and a half billion. Then this would have more production. That's not a bad idea, but. The approval is pretty low, so I'd start to get malices if it goes below 40%, I believe. 
So it's debatable whether or not you want to do that. Now, the normal use for survey ships is actually getting anomalies, like that one there. But early on, it's much better to use it as a scout, in my opinion. If there is an anomaly on the route that I'm going towards, then I will, of course, pick it up there. Uh, this can come down there. And let's bring that down there, I guess. The scout ship can come up here. There's a strong chance there's another AI over here, so hmm, maybe I should have brought my service ship up over there than the, rather than the scout, but I'm not sure. Uh, let's buy another research lab. Add a settler. Let's bring that to there and buy that. And end of turn. Okay, let's take that out here. Actually, completed that tech now, so the movement's gone up. Uh, let's bring us down here. I found an essential crystal, which I'll probably want to pick up later on. In this early stage, your key priority is getting new colonies rather than making star bases and picking up resources there. Uh, research. So, extra move. A ton of extra things there. Next tech, I'm going to pick up that extra move from point. This affects all ships. That one isn't bad, but it only affects colonies and constructors. This has been improved recently, I think. Used to be plus one or plus two, but it's probably not enough to worthwhile considering. Uh, right, so let's get the extra movement there. Uh, right, what have I got left to move? Colony ship. Okay, let's bring that to here. Now I want to upgrade this. I've previously designed that center ship, so it's going to take me two turns to upgrade. It's going to cost me 564. That is cheaper than me just holding off to get that tech and then buying it, basically. That's 230, 159, so I probably saved myself a couple hundred credits, basically. Uh, very expensive still, though. But that gives me an extra sensor range and an extra better engine so we can move around quicker. Is there anything? Right, I want to buy that factory. Not sure if I'm going to buy any more than that though. Okay. Probably a food there and maybe approval or something over there longer term. Okay. Right, so let's end the turn. Now I can actually move my shipyard as well, which I forgot, and I may want to. Uh, let's scout around a bit first. Then. Let's come down here. Right, that's still upgrading. Um, with this, I probably want to extend my range as much as possible, so colonies there or there, probably. Let's just head towards that. Get my sensor ship to find out these other planets. Uh, scout ship can come up there. There's a rule of three around star systems or stars uh, that you should know of as well. Basically, a planet can't be more than three tiles away. So, as long as you've scouted all three tiles around the planet, you're not going to miss out on any habitable planets. Uh, this can come down there. And this colony ship, let's colonize Phallus. I'll be quiet during those uh, videos. So this has a bonus to research and wealth. Early on, no, I probably just want manufacturing here and I might 
change my mind later on. Need it to help out. Make uh, colony ships, basically. So let's take those off because I prefer to have more control about what's upgraded. Okay. Now this plant's pretty close nearby, so I think I'm probably going to put production on there at least early on, maybe even later on. Let's unanchor that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Basically, if you move a shipyard more than six tiles away from a plant that's pro uh, providing it with manufacturing, it starts to get decay, so you don't want to do that usually. So I want to keep all three of those within six tiles of the shipyard. Alright, so if I bought that, yeah. I may buy another one of those, but I'm not going to yet. I'm not actually using this factory, so it's not important, kind of, that I buy it yet. Uh, right, so censorship got then upgraded. I probably don't have enough to buy another one, sadly. I found another, another habitable plant, but it's pretty crappy. I may buy another colony ship though, because that's pretty close. That should be in range. One, two, three, four, five. If I colonize that, I'll have range to get there, definitely. Yeah, so I think I might buy another colony ship this turn. This censorship. Down here. Let's plant up there actually. Let's come up here then. Find out about that. Scout ship. Bring it up here. Let's see if there's an AI up there. What's left to move? Colony ship. Right, let's buy another colony ship then. I'll anchor that. Buy another cheap one. I do want to leave myself with a certain amount of money. I like to run my economy at a deficit for a certain amount of time. Uh, I don't really want to get up wealth buildings until maybe like turn 50, turn 75. So I probably need about 1500-ish. But I can pick up a ton of anomalies so I can get 10 more money that way though. So. Something I might try and do. If I can pick up a source of Thulium early on, then I can make another survey ship. Because the prototype survey module needs Thulium. And that's the way I can get more money, basically. Let's put that there. Okay, I've got research to do. Extra movement point for all my ships. Nice. Let's get Iron Drive. Make my colony ships even faster. So, right, let's colonize this now then. So this is a wealth planet, but I may actually want it for manufacturing because there's a big block here and I can ship all manufacturing to that shipyard then. Um, yeah, that wouldn't be a bad production world. That would probably be a better research world than manufacturing. Right, so let's colonize here. Now you get an event basically every time you colonize paddle on your homeworld planets. And this generates ideology points, so which decision should I go for here? That's probably the best. Well if this is gonna be an econ planet, an extra econ boost would be good. Oh there's econ there, thirty percent. But minus Food production and approval. I think I'm going to go for this one. I kind of want to go pragmatic anyway because that's what uh, the AI normally goes for with the Iridium Corporation. There's a lot of trade based pragmatic uh, ideologies, picks that you can make, which would be keeping with the theme. Probably will have Malevolent as a backup though, because I like that as well. So, yeah. Let's pick that. Well, there's actually a military bonus there, which they can be very useful. Let's 
big clump of land here. That's tourism and influence. We actually had a 10% influence boost here as well, didn't we? It's actually wealth there. So let's make our ideology pick. So what I like to do with ideologies is tend to go for these building uh, ideology picks. They generate ideology points. But in this case, because of the map starting map conditions, I think this would be a very good pick, constructive. Basically this gives you uh, three free constructor vessels. And I can actually upgrade these to colony ships, so that will allow me to colonize a lot quicker. I wouldn't always pick this, but in this circumstance, I think it's going to be worthwhile. So I'm going to pick that here. Okay. So we get three of those. Uh, let's continue to move though here. So one, two, I move that one there. I can see all around there. Let's bring this back down here now. That can come over here. Now I might want to wait until I've got the iron drive before I upgrade these constructor ships colony ships. So I think... Well, let's have a look in here. What can I upgrade them to? I'm not even sure I've designed the right settler with this tech to be honest. So yeah, I think I'm going to wait until I get Iron Drive. It's probably what, four turns. That might actually slow. It shouldn't cost me from getting a colony because they'll be faster once I've upgraded them. In theory. Not sure what to do here to be honest. Bring them out in three different directions. Right, that's in range of theirs. So let's go down there. If I keep it within my territory it will upgrade in one turn so that's m maybe what I want to do. I could move it. I could use them as scouts temporarily and then upgrade them. Uh, this can come over here. Scout ship can come up there. Censorship. I can see me making another censorship pretty early on here, which I wouldn't always do. Okay, I'll colony. Early on, I'm going to focus this on research. No, actually, it's quite near to these, isn't it? So I want manufacturing to help the shipyard out. So where am I going to put this? That's wealth. There. Okay. I might be able to get a colony ship out every turn basically if I have enough manufacturing on these three worlds. Right, so let's end the turn. Okay. Nothing there. Nothing there. Oh, actually, there was a planet there. Okay, so I might want to bring constructor over there. These constructors have amazing range, though. Could just use them as scouts. We've got a five. Um, it's not a terrible idea. I can upgrade them to colony ships then once I find a Hamptal planet in the distance. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that at least with one or two of them. Some people say you shouldn't use colony ships or constructors to scout. They're 
talking out their ass basically. There is a small chance they get attacked by pirates, but pirates only actually have a movement of uh, two tiles, so it's pretty unlikely. And, well, losing the odd one every now and then isn't going to cause much of an issue, to be honest. So, let's bring the ship down here. Okay, haven't found an AI yet. Oh, actually, that's in range. I think I'll come down there then. I could buy another colony ship, but that's kind of leaving me very low on money then. I don't want to go that low. So I'm going to need it for upgrades and run it at, at a deficit. So... Right, let's center. Oh. So it's moving into the right place. No, it isn't. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's move it there. Okay. And turn. Okay. Tourism income gone up a tiny bit. Okay, let's bring it off there. three around that actually. Missed a couple of tiles. Right, there's actually a barren world here but you need a certain tank to get that. So it's going to be a while before I can get it. If the Yor are in the game they actually start with that tank I believe. Uh, the censorship. Get down there, what's left? Right, that colony ship's going down there. Uh, that can come over here. That one can come over there. Okay, I believe I've been playing for over half an hour, so I'll have to call it an end of the first video here. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give this video a like. I'm really grateful to those of you who do that as it improves my videos in YouTube search rankings. That's the way that most people actually find uh, videos on my channel. Uh, you may have actually found uh, this channel yourself by using the search feature, who knows. Uh, also, if you're new to the channel, you may want to consider subscribing. There's plenty more Galactic Civilizations 3 content on the channel, Let's Plays and Guide videos, and there's many other games as well. Uh, please check out the homepage and see if there's something you like at some point. If you have any comments or questions about this video, please ask away in the comment section. Uh, basically, I respond to pretty much every comment left on the channel, especially questions, no matter how old a video is. Uh, there's more information, uh, useful information about the game in the video notes and links that you may be interested in. And also, I have a Patreon page. If you really fancy supporting the channel more than just uh, views and likes, then that's a way you can do that. And I believe that covers just about everything, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.